Welcome back to All Shops, Great and Small. On today's episode, we're going to talk about drilling holes. We're going to start off by drilling holes in wood. This is called a brace and bit. When I was a kid, this is how you drilled a hole in wood. Uh, they did come out with electric drills, but this has a self-feeding screw on the end of it, which allows it to... To, you'd, you'd mostly put uh, rotational force, but they have this big knob on the end here so you can put it against your chest and drill if you want. We're going to talk about the force necessary to drill a hole, not so much in wood, but uh, certainly the force necessary to drill a hole in steel. Once the uh, electric drill came along, then this was a common bit used. This is called an expansion bit. Uh, this is adjustable. You can uh, you can move this in and out, and it's also some, somewhat self-feeding. It has the the screw on the end of it there, uh, but that was uh, the bit you had when you only had one bit. This is a spade bit, uh, and it's not uh, self-feeding like the the ones that have the screw on. But this is a common bit for for use in wood. Uh, this one has a hole in the end of it so that uh, when you're using it to feed wires. Uh, the drill goes through, and then you can stick your wire in the hole here and uh, pull it back through. This would be the uh, I call it a Forsner bit. Uh, there's probably that's a the trade or that's the name of the company that I believe started this. But these are all knockoffs now from a foreign country. Drilling in wood, uh, speed is important. You want to have the the drill going fast, and on you you have the pulleys here. You can adjust it to get high speed and. Uh, Again, for wood, it's important that you run the drill fast. We also have the twist drill, which can be used in wood, uh, but primarily the design is, is for steel. Um, and we're going to go over uh, some of the, uh, the sharpening techniques and what has to be done in the end to make it so that it's uh, somewhat easy to feed uh, into steel. We're going to go into the metal shop here and uh, talk a little bit about feed speeds. and. Uh, uh, when you're drilling a hole in wood, again, you want to run the drill fast. But when you're working with steel, it, an old rule I remember was 90 feet a minute. Is It's not RPM, it's tip speed. Uh, it's the So a one-inch drill bit is going to have a different speed RPM-wise than a half-inch drill bit. Uh, and it's, it's measuring the feet per minute on the outside edge of the bit. The same as a lawnmower blade is not RPM, it's feet per minute of the blade as it spins. We're gonna start this up. This you can change the speed of the, the, the drill, the drill, uh, by turning this. The bigger the drill bit, the slower the speed, at least in steel, well, probably in wood too. This machine we're looking at is called an arbor press. And what does that have in common with a drill press? Well, this is used to press bearings out and put force on something, and it's really the same as a drill press when it comes to its ability to put down force on. This rack and pinion arrangement gives you a, a real mechanical advantage and, and it allows you to put a lot of force uh, on, on a bearing case or something here, but on a drill press, it, it allows you to put force on the drill bit. Now what you can do to reduce the down force necessary um, is drill a pilot hole. If you drill a pilot hole that's the diameter of this this web, the web which is the on the drill bit at the point, you're actually pushing that point through the into the steel and then forcing that steel to go out around these edges here and come up the flutes. You can reduce the downforce necessary by drilling a pilot hole that's at least as big as the web you're forcing into the, into the steel. The other thing you can do is uh, there, there's a they called it a crankshaft grind, uh, which allowed a, a second grind on these faces. And instead of this chisel point being wide, it actually comes to a point. And that reduces the amount of downforce necessary to, to break into the steel. Often when you're drilling a hole, uh, you're doing it to uh, 
thread later on or you're going to want to countersink it or uh, very often you need several different operations which requires changing the uh, the tool bit in the chuck. I'm going to demonstrate uh, this is called a Bergmaster and this has the ability to to change the turret. I'm going to turn it on here and show you what it's capable of. Now this is a test head. The drill This is what you drill before you use this tap head. Uh, I think we got a half 13 set up to a quarter 20 13. Run the tap down. Down it comes. I'm only showing you that to show you some of the variations in different types of drilling that you do in a machine shop. I'm going to go to another one here, very similar to this, only uh, much smaller. This is the smallest Bergmaster, uh, doing the same thing as the other one, uh, only this one uh, is a much smaller version, and it taps the same and all. And again, it's a it's a turret head, rotates. You set your stops, and you can set your different speeds somewhat on this one. You can. Uh, to accommodate the different drill sizes and uh, also different functions. When you get into drilling bigger holes, uh, generally the drill press has power feed. Now on this one you can, when you pull the lever out, it starts the feed going down and, and then you release it. Uh, but that allows to drill a, a big, when you're pushing a two inch drill into steel, you need more downforce necessary than you can actually give it with your uh, hand. You easily spend uh, a, a two weeks on drills, but we're just going to go over one other. Uh, when you're drilling in uh, rock or uh, masonry, uh, you use a masonry bit. And the difference is that it has a carbide piece brazed into the end of it, which is very hard. Carbide's hard, but it's also brittle. Uh, and that's what you use, or at big holes we use what we call a core drill, and that also has the same carbide inserts brazed into it that allow it to drill very hard objects. I'd like to apologize for my selfie stick acting up quite a bit. I'm going to have to probably get a new one. But uh, next week is going to be very exciting because we're going to be at Watkins Glen Vintage Festival, which you gotta love that if you like cars and racing and the smell of race fuel. Uh, and the other thing I wanted to mention was uh, it's the 50th anniversary of the Pennsylvania Trials Riders, started by Jerry Young, uh, 1969. And we had an event last weekend where the one day we had 85 riders, we had a, a huge turnout. And a, a big thank you to the landowners, John Horn and the Calvert family, and Adam Calvert and Kelly for all the work they, and the PTR guys. I can't start naming names because there's, there's quite a few of them. Uh, but anyhow, next week, and, and be sure to look for us on Facebook and YouTube. You want to go YouTube, uh, Robert Logue, or all shops, great and small, and we will see you in two weeks at Watkins Glen Vintage. Have a nice day. Very big turnout for the PTR 50th anniversary trials event in Dubois Hollow. Uh, dual sanctioning District 4 and District 6.